Well, hi, and welcome back to A Boat Called Wanda, and Happy New Year, everybody. I hope you have a great 2019. I also hope that you had a good Christmas break and, uh, like me, ate too much and drank too much, and now it's time to get back to business. Before I get started on the update, I just want to go over some of the questions that were raised around the engine or the condition of the engine. Um, now, as you saw last time, I lifted the engine out and sort of had a quick look underneath and could see that it's pretty messy and the sump is probably well and truly rusted and perhaps even rusted out to the point where oil has, has leaked out. I've never actually had this engine running since I've bought Wonder, and I don't know when the last time the engine was run. When I had the survey done out in the Caribbean, I did ask the surveyor to do a engine run, but unfortunately that never happened. And now I can pretty much see why it never happened because that engine was never gonna start. The story that I got was when the surveyor went out to the boat yard, um, there was no power, so he wasn't able to start the engine. Um, he said that he had a battery charger with him, but the uh, power in the boat yard was out. So I reckon they went out there, put two and two together and realized that um, you know the, the oil pan had probably rusted through and there was no way that they were gonna be able to start that engine um, and have it run and be able to say, yeah, the engine's fine. So anyway, that's where we're at. Now let's get up on deck and see what needs to be done next. Actually, I'd forgotten that ages ago, I bought one of these little tools, which is a um, device for removing silicon, like scraping off silicon and then setting a radius. So before I commit to doing all of the radius with those um, spoons that I tested, I think I should really give this a go because it's custom made for that uh, purpose. So basically there's three different size um, fittings that you can put on this and I think uh, it describes the radius 17, so it's probably 17 millimetres, uh, 10 millimetres and 13. Now for these sections here along the tow rail where the angle is more or less a right angle, I'll probably use the smaller of those radiuses because you don't want anything too large here, so probably the 13 millimetre. And then for the coach roof over here, and for the hatch housing, uh, where the angle is more obtuse, I think I'll try using the 17 millimeter because you probably want a more gentle sort of angle around here. I also need to order more of that 407 because I've just got a little bit left and it won't be enough to do all of the work and I'd rather just pretty much hit this in one go. So I'll make an order for some 407 and um, I'll just do another little test now. So I'll start out using the larger radius. Let's see. I think that might be too big. Maybe there's not enough there. That's probably going to be better, isn't it? I've just been doing a little bit more work on the foredeck. I was basically sanding a little bit of a ridge where the two pieces of material butt up together. And uh, I found a bit of an issue here. Um, I'm a little bit reluctant to show you this because uh, I'm a bit worried about inviting criticism. But um, anyway, I should be honest. There's a bit of a cock up here that I've made, so let's have a look. And basically what you can see here is a result of having a fairly large bubble actually in the uh, laminate as it was uh, being laid down. So basically this started out as just a bump. I could feel a bump um, in the laminate, so I just sanded it out and this is actually quite long, I guess it's about 60 millimetres by about uh, 20 millimetres and there's a smaller one here. Now just in the work that I've done so far, I have actually felt a couple of little ripples and bubbles here and there over the deck so I imagine there's a few more of these to deal with. I think what I'm going to do is just basically cut out that shape in a piece of that 1200 quad axle and just fill it up with a bit of laminate and then it again rather than just trying to fill it up with fairing compound which I could do but um, given that it's probably one and a half millimeters thick I think I'd rather build it up with laminate but you know it's a good reminder that this is DIY and I am an amateur and I am not professional in any sense of the word and I make mistakes and this is one of them hopefully there's not too many left on the rest of the deck but um, right. we'll see. Well it's time to take this peel ply up The reason I need to take it up now is 
because I found those couple of blisters, I really need to go over everything now and have a really good close look at the dirt and uh, identify any other blisters that could be here and sand them out and, and patch them up and fix them up. The other thing that's good to do now is you can see the texture of the, the peel ply is sort of uh, varying and so if I get the uh, sander out I'll just sort of take any little ridges off this peel ply I think there's a blister there yeah Okay, this is very much an experiment, but I'm wondering if I can just fill up some of these other smaller sort of blisters with epoxy. So if I just drill a small hole in one end, and a larger hole on the other side, I'm wondering if I can pour some epoxy through so that it travels through the blister and then pushes the air out of this hole that I've, I've drilled on this side. Let's see. Yep. If I block this hole off, I should be able to force it out the other side. Cool. Okay, well I think I'll just go and do these sort of medium-sized blisters like this and uh, fill them up and come back tomorrow and see what they're like. Now the blue stripe along the cockpit combing had some pretty big cracks in it and we sanded back those cracks to see how deep they went and as you can see here, once all the gel coat had been removed, we could see that the cracks have actually gone down into the glass fibers themselves. There's quite a large one here. And then over on the starboard side, there's all of these um, cracks along here as well. When I was talking to spray painters earlier this year about getting a quote to do the painting of the deck, they actually, both of them mentioned independently that with Halberg Rassies, they'd seen problems with the blue stripe before in that similar cracks to what I had in that um, paint job and if it was just sanded back and repainted those cracks will just come back in a couple of years time so to fix that I'm going to put some glass matting over those areas where the cracks are and then build it up with some fairing compounds so that those cracks will never come through again and to do that I'm going to go back to using some chop strand matting and vinyl ester resin there's no need to use uh, epoxy for this so I'm actually looking forward to using vinyl ester resin again because it's so much easier than using epoxy resin it's much easier to lay down and to uh, to work with okay so I'll just measure up my cloth and cut it up and come back here and, and put that down next here I've been um, starting to do a little bit of fairing of the seating around here to try and get it sort of straight enough so that we can get it painted um, and then ultimately I've got that uh, prefabricated teak that will be um, epoxied down here so you know it does need to be relatively flat so I've just got out the straight edge and I've been starting to do a little bit of calculations of how I'm going to fair it and uh, I've just realized that it's really massively rogered around here actually and at this point I don't really know what I'm going to do it's so uneven I'll show you what I mean so here's my straight edge I'm looking across the back going this way and if I come to here you can see on this side there's about 12 millimeters gap there and it's the same with the other side so basically across this way it's really uneven and then even worse going lengthways along here you can see if I'm trying to find a, a level along here that this back end really drops down you know it's almost probably 18 millimeters going this way see this this big gap there so I'm going to have to do something next that I really don't want to have to do right now it's just a massive diversion 
And that's um, get the, uh, the package that arrived a couple of months ago of that prefabricated teak and open it up and look at how those pieces are laid up because um, depending on how big they are will determine what sort of angles they have to cope with. If they're in large pieces, they're going to have to go cope with you know, something that goes up and down like that. If they're in smaller pieces, say this long, I might just be able to fair it so that one goes this way and the other goes that way. But I don't really see how I can build up, you know, 15 or 18 millimetres of material around the seating area to try and get a level surface. It's just, you know, it's incredible really. So, um, yeah, it's the last thing I need, but I guess I have to go down, open it up and bring some up here and, and see how it's measured up. Okay, well I've put down uh, the prefabricated templates, as you can see here, and um, it's not too bad. I mean, that they are quite flexible, and by the time it's vacuum sealed down, it should sort of follow the contours of the very uneven deck. And I can see, if I put a straight edge here, um, that sort of 15, 18 millimetre gap has been perfectly mirrored, which means that the... Um, you know, the teak, uh, prefabricated teak has just sort of followed that and bent around like that. So, you know, it's, it's kind of disappointing that it's that uneven and it's disappointing that you can get a straight edge down here and see that it's like this, but, you know, it's, it's okay, it's good enough. I think I just need to accept that it's, it is what it is. So, anyway, I can put this back and pack it up because I really don't want to get distracted with, you know, looking at the teak and already I've sort of found a few things that aren't quite right with it but um, I need to come back to that otherwise I'm just going to lose my focus so I'll put this back I think I'll forget about skimming this cockpit area to try and get it straight there is a bit of a dip here going across this way and I, you know I can fill that up so I think the long way sort of movement of like that is fine because this is uh, 1.8 meters but going this way which is about 50 centimeters um, I can at least skim it that way so it's not dipping in the middle here. Okay, time for some lunch and then I'll get back into this. Okay, well before I can get this deck painted, there's one other repair that I need to come back to now and get done. Um, this is picked up in the survey about a year ago and it's all to do with the base of the, uh, the mast step where the mast comes down. So as you can see here from the original um, footage, there's some quite deep cracks around the base of this mast, or the mast heel. Now I've taken all the um, gel coat off here and cut through the top layer of skin and you can see the problem here is this wooden, which is just like plywood by the looks. It's the wooden core here and it's really just compressed down here. Um, that's actually dipped down here by about six millimeters, I think. And ultimately, it was the compression of that timber in the core that was responsible for all of those cracks around the mast base as it was really sort of pushed down and compressed there. Now, to get an idea of how bad it was, this is the heel that the mast goes into. And it's got quite an angle on it, quite a bent here. You can see against the straight rule, the curve here, so there must have been a hell of a tension on the rigging which basically pushed the mast down like this or pulled the mast down onto the deck and underneath the, um, the coach roof there's a compression post on the inside and this is just really sort of pushed down um, all around that material which was just you know, plywood. So the plan is to pull out this plywood and put down some stainless steel so that there's absolutely no timber that can compress in that core. So you've got the compression post, the bottom skin, um, steel, stainless steel, the top skin, and then the mast base. So basically there's nothing, that can, there's nothing soft enough that can get compressed. That's the plan. It's actually quite difficult to remove this timber from the core because unlike the other places where there was a lot of water ingress and it was just all rotten and peeled off, the bond here is actually quite solid. So this isn't going to come out easy. Now the problem I've got is just um, the shape of it, you know, it's all kind of corrugated and all over the place and really compressed in there as you can see. So unlike the rest of the core which I removed, I won't just be able to sort of lift it out. So 
The plan I've got is to use my plunge router and a fairly large 25 millimeter uh, bit to basically cut trenches through this core to try and remove it that, that way. To do that I've made up this jig here which is basically a slot to let the um, routing bit move through and just some fences here to control the position of the router. So the way that this is designed to work is I've got these two pieces of timber to guide this which is uh, glued down to the deck with hot glue. So I should be able to position this here, um, screw it down and then put the router here and move it across and do one slot, move it 25 mil down etc 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 so that I can um, remove this. Now that should be able to control the depth well because the surface is all uneven but you know these two blocks have given a fairly level surface to work on. Well that's the theory anyway but as I said it is a bit of an experiment so let's see how it works out. Now I can just do a cut along this way and clean up this edge which is sort of scalloped out. Well I'm getting really late with this update so I'm going to have to leave it here. I'm sorry it's late but there's just been so much going on. Let me just show you a bit of a recap of uh, what I've been up to after the last probably 10 days I guess now. So lots going on back here. Um, I've taken the hatch off, I've taken the grab rails off, all the deck hardware and cockpit hardware has been taken out, all the instruments, instrument panels have come out, I've fared this cockpit area, needs the final sand. I've taken out that last piece of teak down the bottom here and as it came up it ripped a lot of that substrate off so unfortunately I'm now going to have to put some laminate down on that to build it up a little bit, give it a bit more strength. Coming down here again, all the hatches are out, all the deck hardware is off. Um, this is that piece that I cut out into the mast step, so I've ordered up some steel to go into here and I'm just waiting for that to arrive. I put some laminate into these larger blisters and really pleased with that. That's a fairly seamless uh, fill there, so just sand this back and fill that. Um, I've put the radius down here on this side need to complete it on the inside of the coach roof. Done a bit more fairing to this, what was the blue stripe here, need to sand that back. And the same with this side of the cockpits, I've put some fairing material there that needs to be sanded back. All the non-skids been taken off here, as you can see by the different colour. So I need to start doing the rest of the non-skid up there. So lots going on, bit of chaos, it's an absolute bomb scare back here. Nothing's where it should be, everything's splayed out all over the place and I need a really good clean up but I've just been on the go trying to get things done. I'm sorry I haven't had a chance to uh, open up those Christmas presents yet. I will have to do that in the next update because there's one tool in particular that I need to get out to finish a job and I've actually got even more stuff coming, some big equipment coming next week. So big things happening here and a lot of stuff's going to happen over the next couple of weeks. I'm sorry this update's a little bit long. I've tried to condense things but there's just been so much that I've done and I've tried to sort of take bits and pieces from everywhere to, uh, to keep you on the loop. But anyway, thanks for watching. Come back next week and I'll see you then. Cheers.